this is the third heaven traveler, Andrew Sheets, with you. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you for this opportunity. I pray for those who have eyes to see and ears to hear. I pray that the body of Christ, the saints, we could be uni in, <clears throat> in unity, unified in you, Lord, that there not rise up useless and petty strifes, arguing over foolish things, Lord like this flat earth, earth is a sphere debate. Lord, you know my heart. You know, Lord, that I only bring this teaching up as a video in this blog to show that there are reasons that this has to be brought up. Father, in any way where I am in error, I pray for right godly biblical correction and i pray that ultimately you be lifted up and that the essentials of your word be taught in accordance with your will i ask this in the name of jesus even so come soon lord amen <clears throat> maranatha <clears throat> The title of this blog is Our Planet Earth is a Sphere, a Three-Dimensional Globe. Please stop this flat earth nonsense. Now, I wrote this in June, on June 14th, 2018, because back when I wrote this, there was a, a, a kind of a, I don't know, there was like an explosion of this flat earth Con, uh, conspiracy stuff and there were many Christians who were exploding all over Facebook saying basically this is a biblical issue the only reason I am making this video I repeat the only reason I'm making this video and stress this blog is not to get into an argument flat earth sphere earth among those who study this, who really get into this, uh, for the people who are not saved, who are not Christians, great. Go after all your conspiracy stuff. I applaud you. Have fun. But for Christians to get into this as a biblical foundational issue, it's extremely dangerous. Ex it, on any side of the argument, any side of the argument. There, there's there's really three reasons. Let me start. There's three reasons I'm doing this video. Reason one is the number one, first and foremost, like I just said, this is not an issue of for Christians to be out beating the bushes and telling people they got to believe it's a flat earth or they've got to believe the earth's a sphere, which I believe it is. First of all, I had, well, I had a foolish woman. As Timothy writes in Second Timothy, uh, chapter four says that if these foolish women are just led astray by these false teachers, and this woman needs to consider rabies shots. I mean, she was rabid, went off on me and told me that because I failed and was blind to the truth that the Earth is flat, of the firmament, and she had all these scriptures that were, by the way, baseless. <clears throat> that because I didn't believe in this flat earth that I could not be saved. I was destined to hell because I didn't know the foundational truth of the word of God. And she meant this. Let me say she meant this from the bottom of her heart. She was determined it was her God-given mission to go everywhere to the links of the earth on Facebook and all their social media platform uh, to attack me, send me this email that because I didn't believe in flat earth, I was unsaved. She is a liar. And if you're listening to this, you are a liar and you will be judged by God at the great white throne judgment because there's chances you're not even saved if you believe that. You're so lost. But if you are saved it, the, at God's at the Bema seat judgment, you're going to have to answer for that stupidity, for the ignorance and moronic commentary to believe that a person's belief in flat earth or whatever 
is a biblical foundational issue based on salvation and essential doctrine. I can't stress this. This is why I'm doing this video. This is gaining traction out there, people. If you comment on this video and start your flat earth nonsense, I will block it and not even read it. If, however, you give me scripture, and I will look at your scripture, and I will answer you back and show you that your scripture is unfounded, because either here's what's happening, either you're using <clears throat> a perverted Bible and you're twisting it, or if you're using a King James, you have no knowledge of English grammar, and I'm going to show this later. Or you completely twisted and are not rightly dividing scripture, and you got off on some wild goose chase going down a rabbit hole. But I'll answer it. But if you come off, oh, you know, it's essential, it's essential doctrine. Now, if you come at me and say it's not essential doctrine, but it's interesting or something to discuss among Christians, okay. But if you go off, honestly, I have a hard time even talking to flat earth people. I really do because of their ignorance. And I have a dear brother in Christ. He is a solid, God-fearing, blood-bought, born-again Christian who used to believe in a global earth. Now he's looking at flat earth. And I'm willing to look at his scriptures. And he, he will, and I will go over that. But um, he certainly, my brother is certainly not saying this is a central doctrine. So, but there are many of you out there who are. And that's really what concerns me. Now, I will say this also. We, we have to examine ourselves. Are we going after this from the right heart? What's your point? I can go all day long, and I will do this video. I have the proof here that the Earth's a globe. Okay, fine. I don't go shove this down people's throat. I put it out there so you know how I believe, but I don't go try to change people's minds. I have found that 99.5% of every flat earther I've met, they feel this, they're compelled to get me to believe the way they do. Yeah. Do you see me running around trying to compel people? No, I make my statement. Here it is, the earth is a sphere. It's not flat. But I don't care if you believe this or not. I really don't. In fact, I don't want you to believe this if you refuse to look at it. And you should treat me the same way. Don't shove your flat earth nonsense, nonsensical, foolish, silly theory down my throat. And other Christians and people don't believe it. Okay, that's reason one I'm writing this, doing this blog and this video. Um... Uh, the second reason is we're commanded in God's word not to argue over foolish things. It causes strife. Let, let's read one of the scriptures together. Let's go to 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 3. All right. Read with me. Open your Bibles, please. King James. All this is King James. Verse 3 to 2 Timothy chapter 2. Uh, correction, it's verse 4, I'm sorry, verse 4, 2 Timothy, verse 4. 2 Timothy, chapter 2, verse 4. No man that warreth entangleth himself with the affairs of this life, that he may please him who hath chosen him to be a soldier. And, and look at verse 5. And if a man also strive for masteries, yet he's not crowned, except he strive lawfully. And I've done studies on this. Law, striving lawfully is rightly dividing God's word and using his word with the authority properly and correctly studied and interpreted. If you are not interpreting scripture correctly, but trying to fit your narrative, your straw man narrative, your false narrative of flat earth into a scripture that's not rightly divided and properly interpreted with godly exegesis and letting scripture interpret scripture, you're striving unlawfully. I'm warning you. 
And if you go after and start arguing with that, you're striving unlawfully. In verse 15, it tells us, uh, correction, I'm sorry, in verse, let's read verse 23. Verse 23 of 2 Timothy chapter 2 says, uh, quote, But foolish and unlearned questions avoid, knowing that they do gender strifes. Do you think that arguing over a flat earth over a sphere might be a foolish argument? That saying stuff you have no idea you're talking about that I've actually used, or let's say, let's say, okay, for sake of argument, let's say I'm 100% wrong and you are 100% right. In the end, does it really matter from the essential doctrine of salvation? No. Does it really matter from the essential doctrine of the biblical Godhead versus the Trinity? No. Of eternal salvation? No. Of if, if, if teaching, preaching the gospel, what we're supposed to do. No. So why are you continually trying to make me understand your way? Let's do this. I'm doing this with my dear brother who I know is saved, is a, God, a godly man and is not shoving this down my throat, but he says he's looking at this. Let's agree to disagree, but I, and frankly, I'm not going to waste time other than he may have a question about a scripture but I'm not going to waste my time with this other than say, read my blog, send me what you got. I'll look at it if I have time, but it's not really that important. It's foolish to argue. We're commanded not to. I'm not going to get in a striving argument over it. The, the third reason I'm doing this blog and I, actually this video is when you have a title as a Christian and you're on your social media and you're spouting out flat earth, flat earth, flat earth, and basing it on unbiblical scripture that's not correct. And I'm going to show you some examples. And you're refuting solid science. You make yourself look foolish. And what do you think non-Christians think when they see that? Seriously, I've talked with many Christians who are scientists and or pilots like myself. I am a licensed pilot that literally we are in shock. We say this about you. Seriously, this is what we're saying about you. Are you serious? They are babbling about things they don't even know. If you can come to me with a pilot's license and you've done aeronautical navigation, or you've done Navy, naval, I'll say, uh, in, 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 in water, in the ocean. I'm not talking about in a lake, but in expansive watercraft navigation. And you can still say you are a flat earther, then I, yeah, I, I want to talk to you. But otherwise, you don't see these people like a pilot. Uh, we exchanged some comments on a YouTube video. Don't ever get on an airplane on a flight if the pilot's a flat earther. Trust me, you don't want to put your life in his hands. So we're looking stupid, Christians. Read chapter, read Ephesians chapter 1. Correction, read Ephesians chapter 5, verses 1 through 5. Read Matthew chapter 5. We are to set a good example to the lost out there. And when they see Christians running around like stupid people saying ridiculous, senseless things, it makes us look bad. And that's the third reason I'm doing this. And I'll begin. Like all educated people on planet Earth, I'm tired of hearing all of the flat Earth, uh, this flat Earth nonsense. I've even heard Christians say the Bible proves flat Earth. No, it does not. And I'm going to show below. Now, one moron told me he had 200 scriptures of solid biblical evidence of a flat earth. I said, send them to me, every one. He never, he never did. And I've heard 80 other, I've heard scripture, scripture, scriptures, but send it to me. 
and I will refute every single one of your scriptures. And I'll give you some examples here. I'm going to give you three absolute proofs with even actual visual demonstrations that the earth is a globe. I am a retired naval officer, qualified submarines. I've studied by formal, and also I was on surface, I was in the surface Navy. I've studied by formal naval training and use both basic navigation and piloting. And you don't even know, most listeners, flat earthers don't even know what that means. Open ocean navigation and celestial navigation. I've had intensive training. We had a 30% failure rate. Uh, navigation is not simple, especially when you get into celestial navigation. There's a lot of number crunching because you're looking at the astrological factors of the universe of the celestial bodies as they pass through space in relation to and in concepts that are completely foreign to flat earthers of relative motion and studied this. I've used navigation. I am a licensed pilot. I've completed aeronautical navigation training using aeronautical charts. And I went to a part 61 school, not, not a correction. I went to a part 141 school, not a part 61. Part 141 is formal classroom training to get your pilot's license. Part 61 is just do your research online and read a couple books and boom, you're on your own. No, I had to go through formal training. I assisted at Spartan in Tulsa, Oklahoma, one of my instructors, I helped him teach navigation. He was having an issue trying to, he, not an issue, he knew the navigation, but he was trying to explain to some students who were lost in relative motion, and I'm sorry, relative bearings, determining relative bearings. And I said, can I explain this? So I got up and did it in a demonstration, and he's thanked me, so I'm not bragging on myself, but I know navigation. And uh, when I was doing my overextended 200 miles something cross country flights, I had hard copy aeronautical charts. And I've traveled throughout the world. I, I have nearly half of the earth underwater on, on the sea surface. If the earth were flat, trust me, we would only go from straight point to straight point uh, using fixed longitude and latitudes. But we don't. We have a similar semicircular, otherwise it's known as the great circle route. If you were trying to plot straight lines, you would never arrive at your destination. Now, in my blog, it's attached in the description. Please read it. I've got notes here on navigation and marine charts. Read it. The Great Circle Route, okay? It's the shortest course between two points on the surface of a sphere. I will say this again. The Great Circle Route in navigation is the shortest course between two points on the surface of a sphere. I promise you there's at least 80% of flat earthers, probably 90%, that don't even know the concept of a sphere, a three-dimensional object compared to a two-dimensional plane. They don't know that. They, they don't. A sphere, okay. <clears throat> a great circle route, okay. It lies in a plane that intersects the sphere's center and was known by mathematicians before the time of Columbus. Until the 19th century, Ships generally sailed along rum lines, which were made of prevailing winds and fixed compass headings. Great circle routes are usually plotted on charts based on mnemonic projections. Now, a mnemonic projection on which great circles appear as straight lines. And now I'm going to show you here is an actual example. Now, Wolfie. And I'm going to show you the links below. Wolfie actually shows you some actual videos. He actually does it. I'm just showing you graphics here. Of mnemonic map projection. 
it displays all the great circles of straight lines. You see this, they take the point, if you could see my cursor here in the center of the earth, these lines come out. If you're going from point A to point B, when you're on a sphere, if you're on a ball, you're actually doing a semicircle because the earth is spherical. It's a sphere. But when you lay that out on a two-dimensional chart that could be a a a C chart, which we call them navigational charts. You have celestial charts, but you have actual open ocean navigational charts. And then in aviation, you have aeronautical charts. And here's looking from the North Pole down. Here's looking from the equator. These are actual visual demonstrations of plotting a great circle route that proves the Earth is a three-dimensional sphere and not a two-dimensional plane and flat Earth versus a globe calculation. I've even included a visual demonstration of why NASA images of our Earth do not show stars here. See the link, see the calculator, and now I'll say a quick note on NASA images. I know 100% all of uh, correction 100% of all flat earthers they don't even believe NASA when it comes to anything NASA the images they don't believe there's satellites they don't believe there's any space travel they don't believe any images of earth from space they don't believe in a space station. I think they think it's in a studio someplace. Uh, they don't believe any of that. It's all conspiracy. So, and I was uh, off the side. I want to say this regarding conspiracies about NASA and our trip to the moon in 69. Was I there? No. Were you there? No. Could they have done this whole thing with green screens and photo uh, with image in a, in a, in a studio? Yeah, I got, I'm going to comment on that later from my brother in Christ sent me some comments on that. Is it possible? Sure. But that is a conspiracy you literally would have had. I've looked into this deeper. Yeah, it could have been a big hoax. But let me just say this. You literally would have had to have had tens of thousands of scientists and workers would have had to remain completely anonymous and silent. I mean, there's many, many, there's 50 some points where they debunk these con the conspiracy. We never went to the, the moon. Okay, fine. I, I'm not going to get into that, but to say that there's no imagery of the curvature of the earth or the sphere of the earth from space, I don't buy it. To say there's no satellites up there, I don't buy it. I've used them. Geosynchronous satellites for navigation, used it. Communication satellites, used them. All over the earth. Okay? All over the world. I've been on the other side of the earth, people. And we've copied message traffic. Instant message traffic from a satellite. Gee, how did that happen if we're on a flat earth? Separate subject for a separate day. I think we should look at these links I have. Here's a link I have uh, from the drop by Felix Baumgartner from space. He wasn't working for NASA. He, You could see he wasn't in outer space. He was up several thousand feet, but look at the Earth's curvature. But no, you'll deny that. Here's a laser gyroscope to prove the Earth is not flat. Here's my link. Read that. Here's the Flat Earth Debunk and the Unanswered Challenge link. Here's the Take Your Own Flight link. My friend Wolfie uh, did a $100,000 challenge. I followed this for a couple months. He wanted, he begged for a Flat Earther to give him a flight plan using... A, 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 actually a flat earth flight plan on a, an extended trans uh, Pacific flight. It couldn't do it. Watch those videos. Look at it. 
Do you think this is made up? He actually charts it. He fly. He's a my friend Wolfie is an Australian commercial pilot, licensed pilot, ATP, air air transport pilot, certified captain, and has logged thousands of flight hours. And he 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 log he logs and documents everything by proof. And no one is taking his challenge. A couple stupid flat earthers tried to. He debunked them. Read it. Look at it. I think flat earthers, I think they would like to see the world as two-dimensional. I don't know. I think they really want a world as two-dimensional plane. And somehow their little world... It is so shocking to me. I I just am astounded. And uh, I'm going to click on, for example, this link here. One of the most frequent uh, comments I see by flat earthers Wolfie is, here "Show is, me the curve." Doing a I read that almost links. every day on my own channel. Won't won't like now we have shown balloon footage with curve, but clearly flat earthers are not going to believe it until they see it with their own eyes. So now. You have no more excuses. There is a company that will take you for a flight in a MiG-29 to an altitude of higher than 17 kilometers, and they guarantee that you will see the curvature of the Earth. Yeah, there's that one. Now watch this. Now look at his $100,000 winning challenge. So before we started using electronic flight charts on the iPad in the cockpit, these are the paper charts we used to use. Now this is the Jefferson Airway Manual. As you can see, there are several volumes for worldwide coverage. This one contains the maps for Turbulence is not the easiest thing to do. You can see it is packed with information on waypoints, airspace limits. So electronic flight charts are far superior in the cockpit until we hit 85 north latitude. We then make a 90 degree turn so that we are now so traveling if you go east. To, so what we're going to do you'll take this video actually I have several links here. Uh, these are by Wolfie the commercial airline pilot. He posted like I said a hundred thousand dollar USD challenge could no one would do it here's a link on proof of the earth's rotation flat earthers are like it's impossible the earth cannot be spinning we'd go flying off good god they don't understand gravity they don't use the term gravity it goes on and on and on here this is a link some fraud pilot tries to mislead and prove flat earth he was totally debunked so i told you i would give you three reasons Here's one, I've actually used things, tools to prove and study the earth is a sphere. Two, I've given you actual visual demonstrations of plotting of pilot, a licensed airline pilot and other proofs. Three, now I'm gonna talk about the Bible. Is these biblical based creature uh, Christians that say the Bible, you gotta, if I believe the Bible, I believe flat earth. How absurd you are, I call you out now in the name of Jesus. <clears throat> First Corinthians 1540. Read it carefully in the context of the of, of all of First Corinthians. Read it from First Corinthians uh, 35 through 41. Study it. I I implore you, I beg you. I'm, I am so compelled. I, I want to go there right now. Look at 1 Corinthians. Go with me, please, to chapter 15. <clears throat> go to verse 35. And let's read it together. But some man will say, how are the dead raised up? And with what body do they come? Thou fool, thou which thou sowest is not quickened except it die. 
I want to stop here. Paul was continually dealing with fools, with silly brutes, with beasts. Look what he look what he says in verse thirty two of chapter fifteen. If after the manner of men I have fought with beasts, bravo, echo, alpha, Sierra, tango, Sierra, beasts at Ephesus, what advantageth it me if the dead rise not, let us eat and drink tomorrow we will die. Now, a separate subject on the church in Revelation, which is a whole subject we just did with my brothers and sisters in Christ, we did this. Uh, people, uh, the these P people are saying the church is not in Revelation, which is a whole separate subject. But Paul was, and yes, it is. Paul was dealing with Ephesus, the same thing that Jesus warned in Ephesians. But he was dealing with beasts. Now he's talking about these people. They're arguing silly, silly things. He's calling them fools about you sowest, not that the body shall be, but bear grain, it may change, it may chance of wheat or of some other grain. But now follow with me now carefully in verse 38. It's 1 Corinthians chapter 15, 38. But God giveth it a body as it hath pleased him, and to every seed his own body. All flesh is not the same flesh, but there is one kind of flesh of men, another flesh of beasts, another of fishes, another of birds there now here it is verse 40 repeat verse 40 there are also celestial bodies repeat verse 40 there are also celestial bodies repeat verse 40 there are also celestial bodies and bodies terrestrial but the glory of the celestial is one, and the glory of the terrestrial is another. There is one glory of the sun, another glory of the moon, another glory of the stars, for one star differeth from another star in glory. So then he goes on about the resurrection and how one we are to shine and other things. But bodies i said heavenly bodies celestial bodies a body is a body this is a three-dimensional physical object whether it be a human or planet all living animate creatures and celestial bodies are three-dimensional and created by jesus christ the person body image person of the invisible god colossians chapter 1 verse 15 and chapter 2, verse 9. The key word creation. Colossians chapter 1, verse 16. Creation. A three-dimensional object, not a two-dimensional plane. We can visually observe the moon. It is a three-dimensional object as proof. No, it's not just a picture that NASA put up on a green screen, flat earther. Scriptures of body. Heavenly bodies is scripture, also known as the host of heaven, to refer to planet stars, the sun, the moon, and angels or beings, created beings, not spirit, as God the Father is a spirit that no man has seen. Study Deuteronomy chapter 4, 19. Study Psalms 33, verse 6. Isaiah chapter 34, verse 4. Acts chapter 7, 42. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 40. But I, I'm hanging everything. I'm, I, I told you I only have one scripture. It's 1 Corinthians chapter 15, 40. But scripture with scripture, I prove that heavenly bodies, and in some references, beings, is a three-dimensional object. The Oxford English Dictionary, uh, page 241, 19, says a, a, a body is a material thing, physical existence, and existence in space. Existence in space, a physical 
extension and existence in space. An extension and expansion. I'm defining heavenly bodies here. An expansion, masses of matter that exist as heavenly bodies in the context. Now watch this. In, in page 241 of the Oxford English Dictionary of a Heavenly Body, in ge it's a geometric de term describing a body is three-dimensional sphere. Repeat, three-dimensional sphere, P-H-S-P-H-E-R-E, -E, globe versus a circle. Not a two-dimensional circle, people. Heavenly body, sun, moon, planets. In 1393, at the Gower Conference, two uh, paragraph, I think it's 84, bodies are spoken of as planets. This is in your Oxford English Dictionary. The definition of a body is three dimensions. It's a sphere. It's a celestial body. Enough said. Please, <clears throat> please people, open your eyes. The best Bible-based proof the earth is a sphere. Here's the link. I didn't do this. Some Christian study did this. Read it. Uh, it's in the link is in the description of the blog. It's all in the blog. Read it. But 99.3% of all my YouTube subscribers and read, uh, people do not read the blog in its entirety and almost a hundred percent no a hundred percent of all negative commentary i always come to the final root of the problem they haven't read what i've written or the links associated they just look at the title and start blabbering i won't answer these responses people Why are we seeing an increase in the absurdity of flat earth conspiracy theory? Why? There's a whole study on this. It's scary. Read it. Now, I want to do a side note on the firmament because a lot of it, a lot of these parrots, flat earth, firmament, Genesis, creation. Okay. In creation, the firmament is simply the existence of the universe. From the apex to the base, a solid expanse of heaven of which the planetary bodies reside. Read this. See the study on the sides of the north. Do your own study in Psalms chapter 48, verse 2, Isaiah chapter 14, 3, the sides of the north. The, this is, it's, it's the ultimate shape of the universe is a pyramid, and that's why Satan has hijacked it and why the fallen angels to the Nephilim wanted to copy it all over the earth. See my comments below for further study. If you think the Egyptians built the pyramids of Giza perfectly aligned with Orion, then you need to really look deeper into this. Conspiracy, okay. If you want to run off on a conspiracy, run off on that one. Eugene, Dr. Eugene Kim did an ex too extensive two-hour study on both of the on these on these objects, and he 99% nails it. But unfortunately, he goes off saying in two, he has a 30-second spot there where he's saying that, oh, this proves. The Godhead. You better believe this all proves the Godhead. But then guess what Dr. Kim did? He says the Godhead, which is also known as the Trinity, and that's a lie. So if you go study the sides of the North on Dr. Kim's study, which I think he did a great job, you'll see that I really hit him hard. He's a liar. The Trinity is pagan. It's not the Godhead. But I will tell you this. This whole existence of the foundation of the earth, and the earth is not sitting on supports. No, that's all, all not true. It's suspended. It's hanging there. And, and Dr. Kim even hits those points. But you don't need that video to prove it. Of, of, uh, let me continue. But this stems, it does prove the Godhead. The firmament 
in the Oxford English Dictionary, page 1007, is heaven, the abode of God, a solid expanse, something fixed in place, a firm support or foundation, something that strengthens or supports. In the old astronomy, it's sphere containing fixed stars. Yes, the stars are all fixed in their place. Yes. He's fixed and established everything in its place. This means that the fixed and established solid expanse of the universe. Jesus Christ is the creator of all creation and he fills the universe. Read Ephesians chapter 1, 23. I'll let you do your Bible study. It's fascinating. Nothing is out of his sight. Read Jeremiah chapter 23, 24. It is established as the third heaven at the north apex. The second heaven below and the third heaven is the physical location of the planetary bodies and in our case, planet Earth. I'm going to make some commentary. Follow with me. Flat earthers have latched on to a definition that also can be found in a dictionary in the arc is the arc or vault of heaven overhead in which the clouds and stars appear in the sky or heaven. What they'll never tell you, though, they'll never mention that this is considered modern use only in rhetorical statements and or and rhetorical or poetry. Let me say this again. To draw the little, they have this little dome, this little plate with this little sky dome over it. That definition is only rhetorical or poetic. And I have all the, you can... I invite you, go get the Oxford English Dictionary, go in there, you can see all the quotes going back to Chaucer and, and all the way back to the 10th and 12th century. There, there's no astronomical proof or extended definition to support this. But the actual definition of firmament truly is what? Heaven and the solid expanse of heaven. Addendum. June 2022, I have additional subscriptions below the images that flat earthers use, which I'm going to debunk. Let me ask, and I put this in red here, this is the ultimate quintessential question. I need to make this super capitalized. Why don't the flat earthers ever show us the edge of the world? Huh? If you ever want to talk to a flat earther and you want to waste their and your time, believe me, they're going to waste. If you don't believe in flat earth, believe me, they're going to waste your time. They're, they want to waste your time. Ask them to show you the edge of the world. Where's that edge if the world is flat? They can't, won't do it. If this flat earther is a Christian and tries to tell you this is essential doctrine, run from them. Run from them. Cast them away and off of you. There's no end. They can't show you this. They won't. They can't. How does the United States Navy conduct circumnavigation deployments that are documented by ship's history and commanding officers official logs that show east or west routes back to their original destination? Trust me, when a Navy vessel does a circumnavigation route, they're not running off the edge of the world folks they're going around a big ball the charts logs prove this don't believe me i challenge you go get by foia freedom of information act call up any world cruise logs and watch replant re or rechart those and see how for example, the 1983 cruise of the USS Carl Vinson fell off of the face of the earth, which it did not. I would have loved to have had this deployment. 
My brother made that world cruise. He was in the Navy. And uh, he did not fall off the face of the earth, folks. I put this, I put this, I put this in here later here, down here. But go ahead, chart it. These deployments literally go around the globe, people. They're documented by navigational course headings that would be impossible for anything other than a globe to reconstruct. I have a few images you can Google for yourself. And like I said, ask for the FOIA to see the course headings yourself. Reconstruct it. But the sad thing is 95.3% of every flat earther would have a very difficult time even laying out a navigational ocean chart or an aeronautical chart and being able to plot these coordinates out, even unless you've had the training to do it. But, but hey, Google it. You can do this. You can do this and get back to me. For example, I took the first submerged global transit of the USS Triton, which is, was on a west route. And the USS, like I told you about, I think I, think I said 86, I'm sorry. It was a 1983 world, world cruise the USS Carl Vincent made. Uh, that they took an east route. Let me scroll down. Here's the USS Trenton SSRN 586. They start here in Norfolk. They leave Norfolk, Virginia. Well, actually, they're further north. I could research this. They maybe they came out of Groton, New London, Connecticut. Uh, there's a submarine base there, or Norfolk. I'm not sure. We could find out, but it doesn't matter. You can see here on the track, they left on a, a southeast course heading, dropped all the way down below the equator, came around the horn there in Africa. Uh, correction. The, I, I, I stand corrected. They left Norfolk or Groton, Connecticut, they left on a southeast heading. And then it, right before the equator, they dropped south, almost due south, down the coast of South America, hitting, probably hit a few ports down there. They went around the, the horn here, the Cape, off the tip of South America, and then they crossed went now they're on a westerly heading north west westerly heading you can see watch my cursor they go across the pacific the entire pacific ocean west going west 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 and then they come off looks like off the philippines they go down here through looks like down into singapore and the Straits of Malacca down there, that's a very heavy ship lane. They come down. Now, look, now they're still going west. They go south and they go west again. Boop, they fall off the globe. Uh oh, they, they reappear on the globe. They've gone around the globe. Notice, see my cursor here? They're still going west. Then they go under the Cape. Good hope they're under South Africa. And now they start going north. Northwest, and they go due north straight up to England. And then they looks like they hit right up off of, uh, this would be Spain, and the Mediterranean here at the Strait of Gibraltar. Then they, they looks like they touch base there and then head due straight, probably resupply off Spain there. Yeah, let's see, what year was this? 60, yeah, Rota, probably re, re, resupplied off Rota there in Spain. And then went do, do, straight as an arrow, west, back to Norfolk or Groton. You can look it up. But anyway, there's their chart. Now, look at the, look, this is the USS Carl Vinson's 83 cruise. Now, I tried to blow this up as big as possible. I invite you to try to same way, get this bigger, bigger, bigger here in the screen. Now, they did. Instead of going like the Trenton, they started their journey. They left. They're showing. They read. They came around from Norfolk, Virginia, and ended up in California. 
And let's see here, get this smaller. Yeah, here it is. I got it too big. They started, see my cursor, I'm making a circle here. They left Norfolk, Virginia. And what they did, they when they left Norfolk, Virginia, they went straight south into the Caribbean. I don't know. I probably hit Puerto Rico. And then they shot, look at my cursor, they shot east, northeast. And let me make this smaller, all the way into the Mediterranean. Looks like they went up to Spain here, Palma, Mallorca, or someplace. They hit the Caribbean hotspots there, France, Cons, I don't know. And then they zip back out of the Mediterranean. This was like the ultimate, man. And then they come down around Africa. Now they're going, notice this. I said this. They're still going on an easterly route where the Trenton went westerly. They go around the Cape, come up, go up into, it almost looks like they want to go into the Red Sea there, but they come right south of Saudi Arabia, in the Indian Ocean down in there. They come down south. They go down to Australia. My brother wouldn't stop talking about this cruise. He loved it. They were down in Australia. They hit uh, Western Australia. I think it was Melbourne there. They came back up. Then they come across down through the Straits into Indonesia, up off of in between where the Philippines, Vietnam, hit Philippines, come up north. I think they hit Yokosuka, Japan. See my cursor here in Japan. Then they went, hit Hawaii. Boom. And now they're in their new home port in San Francisco. So you can study these yourself, these charts. So this is a circumnavigation route, okay? Flat Earth, boy, they would have a very difficult time falling off the face of their flat Earth, going underneath somehow. I guess you got reverse gravity. Unbelievable. For those of you who do not understand navigation, a flat earther might think circumnavigate means sailing around in a circle. Watch my cursor here on this, if you could. Watch me do a circle. A flat earther, in their limited knowledge of navigation, they may think on a two-dimensional piece of paper, oh, I did a circumnavigation, I did a circle, I did a circle, I did a circle. That does not mean circumnavigate on a two-dimensional plane. It would be impossible. For you to match the course headings. Try to write these course headings on a circle. You'd be going, watch. You'd be going, watch. North is here at the top. You'd be going, okay, north. You'd be going north, north. And then all of a sudden, boom, south. Southeast, 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 southeast south, 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 west, south, west, south, west, south, west, south, whoop, no. Ooh, now we're going north, north, north. And now watch for a second. In this transition, you're going to be running off of headings going to the west. Now, north, 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 north. So if you did that and you were actually at sea on a ship, you'd be doing a big circle. Yeah. <laughs> I, I don't know how to say this. This would be impossible to match a course heading on a two-dimensional plane, people, compared to actual course headings required for global navigation. The word navigate literally means navigation. It's derived from Latin navis, which in Spanish is nave, means a ship or vessel. And agre means to drive. You're driving a ship. And circum is a prefix that means around, about, around. Found in Latin, the derivatives of verbs, they means to encompass surround a circumference circumstance but in this context circumference to go around please study this don't be ignorant you're scary if you don't understand circumnavigate if you think it's drawing a circle i even break it down for maybe that someone doesn't understand the word circumnavigate it means to sail or travel all the way around something, especially the world. It means go around, walk around, travel around, orbit, revolve around, circumambulate. Additional links 
Hey, look at these links. Okay, you say, oh, that's a Navy conspiracy. It's the U.S. Navy. They're all part of it. The Navy and NASA, they're all part of the conspiracy. Okay, then take a hippie who is who hates the government, who wants to do his thing, dude, on a sailboat. Watch these world routes for sailing around the world. You want to meet some of the most extraordinary sailors who are so anti-establishment, anti-government, they can't stand the Navy, but they love to use our charts. They love to use our uh, plans and open na navigation. But these sailors, they've got grease, believe me. These people that sail around the world in sailboats, I would never do it. Have you ever imagined, I've seen it, 70 and 80 foot swells, green water? I have. I was on a U.S. nuclear submarine in the North Sea at the depth of 650 feet and were being tossed around like ragdolls. I was on the periscope, a Type 18 periscope, and came up for a periscope observation when we were running a screen for the uh, carrier battle group. And a destroyer that was running the inside screen, I was watching that destroyer go underwater with my own eyes. I saw it at the depth of 65 feet, this periscope depth on a 688 class submarine, type 18 scope. I saw a destroyer go underwater. The savagery of the ocean is most violent. But these small sailboats, even small 20-footers, and I'm also a licensed sailor. I'm a sailing fanatic. I'm licensed, skipper's license, uh, sailboats 26, 27 foot. I'm a Hobie cat freak. I own a Hobie. Sail every chance I get. Sailed all around the world. I mean, I've sailed in places all around, all over the world. I would never get, I had an opportunity, an offer to sail. This really cool Dutch dude, a guy from uh, the Netherlands, wanted me to beg me to crew help crew for a licensed skipper on a 52-foot yacht from Vietnam when I was living in Vietnam out of Nha Trang to uh, Australia. Well, first we were going to hit, I think, Philippines and then drop go across the Philippines and then go down to Australia. And I said, heavens, no, no, sir. No, thank you. You couldn't pay me. And and, it, and what was sad, it wasn't a lot of money, basically chump change, but it was like for the experience. Like he said, man, as much as I see you sail and I taught sailing, I love teaching sailing. He said, man, you're just the guy we want. You've got Navy experience. You've got navigational training, you know, charts. Um, you, you, he said, man, with the qualification, you get the extra qualifications, you could even captain, maybe think about it. And I said, I would never be on a small sailboat. Never. Never. But these people that do sail and circumnavigate the world in sailboats, I have the utmost, I have to say, I have the utmost respect for them. And at the same time, they're truly tempting and testing God. I, I, I really mean that. They say they can get their navigational fix or their communication to stay away from the storms. Yeah, right. See how that works for you. Rogue waves. See how that works for you. Separate subject. But I'm just trying to make a point. Read this, these links about circumnavigation routes of sailor that sailors use. Gee, what, don't you think they would say they fell off the face of the earth when they made the turn? No. Also, here's an overview of the first aerial circumnavigation. They have it all documented. Conspiracy. They didn't really do it. Yes, they did. Here's additional notes. The flat earthers love Isaiah 40:22 because, of course, they take it literally and use modern Bible translations instead of the King James Bible, which reads, Is it is he that sitteth upon the circle of the earth and the inhabitants thereof are as grasshoppers, da, da, da. Okay. The King James Bible proves 
that it is cor- that anyone who says this is can't be taken literal is correct. It's an allegory because God does not literally sit on the earth, but is sitting down literally on his throne. That's Jesus Christ at the apex of what is the pyramid of the universe. See why north is so important to God's perspective. Why do we have magnetic north? I guarantee you 92% of every listener who is a flat earther does not understand what magnetic north means. I don't know. I heard of it, but I have no idea what it means. I mock you and I rebuke you. Why is north so important? Because God's perspective, look at sides of the north. And why is this pyramid shape in, uh, we speak of sides of the north in Psalms 48, 2 and Isaiah 14, 13? Looking straight down, pretend you are God looking down from the north at the apex. From the northern perspective, looking south over the North Pole, down through the center of the earth, you see planetary bodies, not two-dimensional circles. Bodies are three-dimensional. Look at 1 Corinthians chapter 15, 40. And if we look back to Isaiah chapter 40, 22, I even did this. Try it yourself. I took a beach ball and placed it in between my feet. I looked straight down. Now make sure you have a string, a rope, or something, and go. make sure your eyes are going right down the center from the north pole of that ball. And I could clearly see a two-dimensional circle when I'm looking directly overhead, sure. But, but let's focus really on the word circle. Now, another thing, just a quick note, upon the King James Bible, page 3364 uses upon, And that means elevation as well as contact, okay? But in the context, it's outside of and close to the surface. So just want to make a point there. So, But we're going to focus on the word circle. We see that Isaiah 40, 22 is not referring to a circle of the earth in a two-plane circle. No, it's referring to the orbit of, Spelling Oscar, Romeo, Bravo, India, Tango, O-R-B-I-T. The orbit of the earth around the sun, which is looking, which when looking from overhead downward, it's a circle called an ellipse. We prove this by looking closely at the grammar here. Circle of the earth. Flat earthers, uh, it's 87% are functionally illiterate in grammar. They are. They are. They don't know what the use here is circle of the earth. We see circle is used as a concrete noun followed by the preposition of with the earth. This means that the earth is not a circle, but rather the earth is part of a constituent of, a component of the circle, meaning the orbit, meaning the circular orbit of this ellipse. Or recently, I've heard 80 scriptures, uh, they either use, and and, and people are going to say, no, I've got 80, I've got 100, I have 200 scriptures. They either are squeezing their own interpretation They do not allow Scripture to interpret Scripture. And the other glaring error is they do not understand grammar, like I said, or the basic logic, such as relative motion. Now, let me talk about relative motion. In submarine warfare, one of the most difficult, and I know it's embarrassing, but one of the most complicated subjects I had in submarine warfare training is target motion analysis Tango Mike Alpha, TMA, based on relative motion. You must employ trigonometry, 
in looking at sines of an angle, tangents, the cosine, but you do analysis by looking at a target aspect in relation to its movement and your movement. Relative motion is not a simple thing. But let's look at something. This is another problem I see flat earthers not understanding relative motion. They claim God stopped the sun literally. But literally, what happens is the sun literally means the relative motion of the sun's transit across the earth is noted on a sundial. A sundial was the first method of marking time. No, they saw that movement stop. If you look at Joshua chapter 10, 13, the sun stood still. That means the relative motion of the earth in relation to the sun didn't move. The relative motion of the Earth's rotation is held. Now, modern science says slowing the rotation of the Earth would cause a cataclysmic event like tsunamis, our magnetic field would be lost. However, God certainly would control these forces for the duration of the event described in Joshua chapter 10, verse 13. But this is funny. And ironic because flat earthers don't believe in the earth spinning. They don't believe in gravity. They don't believe in gravity's function with magnetic north. They do not believe in tidal, the control of tides with the moon's gravity and how the sun brings in comets. They, don't, they have to dispel science in a hundred and hundreds of ways. And this is what's embarrassing to people with education that are Christian. Christian, saint, if you are one of these who really believe flat earth, fine, okay, I don't mock you for that, but I mock you when you try to use scripture to say and try to convince me, don't, please do not do it. And any other Christian who's informed, we're, don't be low informed people, don't let some flat earther convince you and pull you into their little world. Now, if they, if you want to, fine, but don't go preaching that you have to believe this to be a good Christian. Now, I want to read a few comments. This brother in Christ, he says, the flat earth nonsense, rather than focusing on biblical imagery, like the four corners of Revelation, which, yeah, they even use that. Let's look at images. And I got these this link here. Look at this link he got on Travel Leisure Photography, the best Earth photos from International Space Station. Okay. I'm going to highlight that link. Look at it. I'm going to do this. I didn't, I just took a glimpse. I didn't look at all these photos, but it looks stunning. Now, this is from Space Station, but Flat Earthers say Space Station doesn't exist. So, okay. But like Keith says, if this doesn't convince a flat earther. I don't know what will. I don't either, Keith. But I want to read this comment. I said, I did some more research on the flat earther's use. And I told him about the Isaiah 40, 22. I already read that to you. But watch this. It's amazing how flat earthers can never, they're never reaching the end of the earth. And I said that. They're this is blind and willful negligence of a proven concept of circuit navigation is beyond belief. And then there's a movie called Capricorn One for the Flat Earthers that say, hey, the moon landing never happened and they show that. Okay, if you want to go with that, read the Read the History Channel's debunking conspiracy theories of the moon landing. Literally, one of the many, many things they debunk. They debunk the flag thing, the star thing. There's no stars. They debunk the shadow thing. Rightly, they debunk the, the uh, huge one is they um, debunk strongly why aren't 40 some thousand scientists, workers, and have come right out and say with the evidence that never happened. Anyway, the idea, and I could go on, you can read these comments here, but uh, let me bring this to an end, this video to an end. 
by saying I don't want to cause any strife or hard feelings with any of you flat earthers. Again, if you really believe this, fine. But don't tell me I've got to believe it to be a Christian because I'm going to laugh at you. I'm going to mock you openly and you will answer to God. If you have to believe, you have to believe in flat earth to be a good Christian or even saved. That's even worse. And I'll leave it here. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you for this time. May this work be blessed in accordance with your will. May eyes be open, the truth be known and established even. So come soon, Lord Jesus. Amen. Maranatha.